this is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at Windows 8.1 Preview. This is where Microsoft gets to make up for some of the things they did that probably bothered some of you Windows 7 lovers out there. We're going to look at it now. So here we have it, Windows 8.1 Preview running on the lovely Lenovo ThinkPad Helix, which is a convertible tablet plus dock. Looks like a laptop, acts like a laptop. Doesn't matter so much actually what we're running it on. Any Windows 8 PC will be eligible for the 8.1 upgrade. Right now you can download the preview yourself if you want. It's about 2.44 gigs, not lightweight there, and you can check it out on Microsoft's website. Actually, it'll download a little helper application that will update the store. And then you can download it from the store in any of 13 languages. It'll also be available as an ISO disk image for those of you who want to get it that way, or if it's not available in, well, the language that you need. Thing to keep in mind here is, you know, when you install Windows previews, generally something makes it hard to, to actually go to the release version. This time it's not too, too bad. You're not going to have to redo all your stuff right here. All your settings are going to stay the same in your preferences, but Microsoft says that if you download it from the store, which is the easier route, you will have to reinstall your apps when the final 8.1 is available. And they don't mean just the Metro apps. They mean the desktop programs as well. I can't imagine why that is, but they say it's so, so it is so. If you do the ISO, I believe you're going to have to actually just uh, use the clean sweep, scrub your PC back to Windows 8, and then just go through the normal upgrade path to 8.1. So, yeah, this is something that probably not all of you are going to want to do. It's a little bit of a pain in the neck. That's why we're showing you what's going on. It will be available by the end of this year. Microsoft's being a little coy and saying, well, you know, like Windows 8 itself is available around the holiday season. Actually, it was available on October 26th of last year, so we're, we're assuming about the same time we'll see this. And it's going to be free for everybody who has a Windows 8 PC. You can get it through the Windows Store. Easy enough. You just go right over to the store. It's going to say, hey, there's a new update, and this new update is going to happen to be Windows 8.1. And in that case, you don't have to suffer in any way. You don't have to worry about reinstalling programs or anything like that. Once it's ready for release, it just installs, updates, just like service packs used to in Windows, so no problem. While we're looking at the store, you can see it's got an enhancements here. We have bigger images over here and better suggested pics for you on the side. So it's a more pleasant and more useful store experience, which is pretty nice. If we look at our home screen here, the Metro UI, this is something that we're all familiar with, but the customization got a bit, bit easier. You have more tile sizes to choose from, which is nice as well. One of the things you can do is you can rename your groups here pretty easily. You can just call it whatever you want, of course, and rename it to your heart's content. We'll just call it Main for now, and there you have it. And if you want to resize a tile, you tap and hold. Tap on resize and we have wide, medium, or small as our options right there. Also, one important thing, you see the desktop background here? You're not limited anymore the way you were to the desktop backgrounds to the Metro UI that you had before. You can use your own stuff. There's more of them available, and you can just use the same thing as that's on the regular desktop. You know, it's amazing what a difference that makes psychologically, whereas before when you switched into Metro because of that very different background, you felt like you were in a whole new world. It was very jarring. So this way, you just feel like you're just using a program launcher. It's much better, I think, that way, isn't it? It's, yeah, that's, I think, actually one of the smallest but the best things that really reduces the psychological barrier to using this. However, what if you really, really don't want to use Metro at all? You hate live tiles. You don't want to see them. You can actually change that. Now, see in the lower corner here, we have the Start Menu button. It's back again. Yes, it is. So by default, it's going to take you to the Metro UI to switch you back and forth between those two, but you can change the assignment of that. Oh, and by the way, if you right-click on it, just like before, you get all the pretty deep and powerful commands that are here, a shortcut, same thing you would hit if you hit that Windows plus X button. But let's take a look at the taskbar. They hid this a little bit. I think they still really wish that you loved it the way it originally was, Windows, but you can change it. Now you see there's a tab here for navigation. And you can see options here that include booting straight into desktop mode so you never have to see Metro if you don't want to see it. And also, we can have that Windows button just bring up the palette of all available programs, which is sort of functionally the same thing as the Start menu always was. It was just a listing of all your programs. You just get it listed in a newer and potentially, I suppose, prettier way here. And we're going to enable that. So that's called Show Apps automatically when I tap the Start button. And that doesn't just affect this little button right here, and that's what you see, 
get the escape button to get out. This will also affect the Windows button on a tablet like we have on our Lenovo Helix and it will also affect what the Windows key does on the keyboard. So if I hit the Windows key, it's just going to bring up the app launcher palette. So basically, there's no way to get back into that Metro live tile screen anymore. So for those of you who hated it, that's I'm sure just fine. But it doesn't mean you can't get to those programs because everything that is available in Metro is also listed over here. So if you enjoy some of those programs that Microsoft has created, the new video player, the Xbox music player, that kind of stuff, they're here for you. Also, there's a couple of new applications. Now, some of these existed on the desktop side before, so it's just Metro versions of them. But we have alarms application. We have a calculator application. We have something called Scan, which you can use with, well, a scanner if you have one. We've got Reading List, which is new, you know, that concept for web browsing. And also we have a new food and drink application. I think this one's actually pretty cool. And this one has a hands-free mode. What does that mean? It's sort of like what some Sony computers do. The webcam's up top here. And when you want to go to the next page, you motion like that and back like so and so. So if you're cooking, right, and you don't want to put your nasty, grimy hands on the screen, you don't have to. How well does it work? You know, it's kind of hit or miss. It depends on how good the lighting is, that kind of thing. So we're going to take a look at a recipe over here. It works best if you get the palm there right across the camera sensor. So there you have it, touchless cooking instructions. We also get a sound recorder application and now there's a health and fitness application. You don't have to own a Samsung Galaxy to get built-in health and fitness stuff. Cool. The music and video applications have been updated to be a little bit more intuitive. And let's just take a look at the video application. And still, it's going to look at your videos folder in your documents folder, your user directory, but it's a little bit more intuitive as to how to get to more. So you can filter, as always, by what kind, TV shows, movies, whatever. But if you swipe up and you want to open any file, tap on this PC. You can go to SkyDrive, this PC, Home Group, Network. If I choose this PC, it has a bunch of locations, desktop, including also my C drive. So I have a movies folder on my C drive, so I can just tap on that and then start playing. Also, the split screen functionality, now this is going to depend on the resolution of your display. The higher the resolution, the, the more windows you can put side by side when you're using Metro applications. So say I want to bring something else in, I want to do this. Now we get a 50-50 split by default instead of one narrow column, one wide one, and you can grab it and resize it around as you see fit. So that's definitely an improvement and very easy to use with touch. You can do it with the mouse as well if you want, but there it is. Definitely an improvement. And if you want to get rid of one of those windows, it's as easy as just doing that, and then this one will go to full screen. IE11 is supposed to be improved in terms of speed performance and touch. And if you've got a couple of tabs open, now we've got open tab and a new window. Aha! Uh -huh. So finally we've got side-by-side -side windows here in the Metro version of the IE web browser, which is pretty nice. A little bit easier than tabs at a time when you want to see stuff side-by-side. -side. Also pretty cool. Microsoft has also added universal search. If you swipe in and we choose search, you can see I have everywhere by default, but you can filter that everywhere. Search in settings, search files, search web images, search web videos. Working towards that universal search for 8.1 release. Metro Charms has more settings now. That's always a good thing. You don't have to go back to control panels on the desktop to do quite so many things anymore. And... We have SkyDrive actually has a selection right here, Search and Apps. You can set various search parameters right here. App Sizes. We finally have a listing of all the Metro apps that are installed, which is really nice. You can manage them if you want to. And any of these, if you want to remove them, you can actually do that. Say I don't want this one. I'm choosing Uninstall right there. Bye. Now you could do that before from the Metro home screen, dragging on the tile to activate it to do that, but it's kind of nice to have a normal program listing here. Under PCs and Devices, you can see we got lock screen settings, display settings, Bluetooth settings, mouse and touchpad, and you can control your hot corners and all that kind of stuff as well. We actually get some display settings now in the Charms menu too. It has resolution control right here with a recommended resolution. 
and you can control the size of apps, smaller or default. Now there's even more settings. If we go to the desktop UI, and go to display settings, instead of the the 100%, the 125%, the 150%, this is a full HD display, so things are kind of small. We've got smaller and larger with a moving scale. Now basically that's that's equal to 125% zoom in the middle. That's the recommended setting for 11.6 inch full HD display. Now this is supposed to scale things without making stuff look as ugly. I find that it doesn't really change the icon size so much as it changes the text. Let's just go for big and see what happens. See the icons are about the same but text is more readable. But it's not fuzzy looking either so they did a pretty nice job there. And we'll go back and this is supposed to be independent so for each display you can set it separately. Now if you go back to the old-fashioned way of doing things like this, this is going to scale all displays equally the same. It's going to be the way that Windows used to do things. So good to have that option now. And under the search and apps set of settings and charms, it's kind of a weird place to put this, but here's where notifications are. So we've got notifications, and it'll start to make sense why this is here, but you can see you can actually schedule this thing to be quiet. So say you just put it to sleep, and you don't actually shut it down, you don't want to be hearing about your new emails coming in at 3 a.m. There it is, you can control that. And why is this under apps and settings? Well, it's sort of like the iPhone, isn't it? Right here under settings, you can control your notifications on and off for all of these different applications individually. So if Facebook is bugging the heck out of you, you can turn those notifications off. As Microsoft tries to make this, I don't know what, dummy proof is possible. Now your computer icon, which used to be my computer in older versions of Windows, is this PC. Just in case you thought it was that PC. No, it's this PC. And here you've got all of your standard media folders here, your downloads, your documents listed in line up top first, which is nice because you don't have to set up that control panel setting for the desktop there to bring up the user folder to make it easy and quick to get to these folders right here and everything else is pretty much the same. You've got your, your network, your home group, you've got SkyDrive right here also integrated. Sky, definitely cloud integration is just getting bigger and bigger here for Microsoft. And lastly we have support for Wi-Fi Direct in Windows 8.1 so if you have a Wi-Fi Direct printer or if you're using Miracast wireless display technology which is peer based doesn't actually have to go through your router just direct connect to your Miracast enabled TV or AV gear that'll work here too. So that's Windows 8.1 in a nutshell. I think the things that people are going to like the most are the return of the start button even if it doesn't work quite the way that start button used to work. You can still use third-party utilities to bring back that really old-fashioned technology. The ability to set your desktop here so it's less glaring or if you want to actually make that go away and all you'll ever see when you hit the start button here on the keyboard on screen is a listing of all your programs. It's just going to seem a lot more fluid and fluent to people who are really entrenched in the way Windows 7 did things. So that's Windows 8.1 preview again sometime late this fall, probably around late October, just like the release of Windows 8 itself. We'll see this update available for all of you. It'll come free through the store. You don't have to do anything except for say yes, click, download, and you're going to be done. Definitely some improvements here. Do you think it's enough? Let us know. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel.